So today I thought we'd do some tips on using the Z Modeler brush, which you can access by pressing B, Z, and M, and you'll find that there. So just to go through the list of things, um, the first one is always make sure your draw size is small. Make it as small as possible. It's much easier to select stuff like this than it is when you have a huge brush and everything is just getting in the way and cluttering. So make your draw size small if you're ever using the Z Modeler brush. The next is when you're inserting an edge loop. So if you, if I, I'll turn off dynamic here. If I insert an edge loop here, you can see that the distance here is much more than the distance here. So if we want this to be the same distance, when you click, just hold down shift and you'll see now it will be equidistant and those edges will be aligned up nicely. Sometimes you'll have this problem that you may have uh, inadvertently taken a vert and with symmetry off done this and you welded it or you've mirrored it and you now have this problem and you're tempted you you're wondering how what's the best way to fix this problem and you may have it on the front or the back you may have this also and the easiest way to fix this is not to go welding stuff and deleting stuff it's actually just to pull one vert from one side over to the other so let's go to a front view pull this over to the other side and because we're mirroring using uh, modified topology mirror and weld that's going to naturally just fix that by moving it over to the other side. So just pull one over to the other side and then hit mirror and weld and that will fix that. The next one is edge extrude. So when you're extruding edges, uh, I'll go back to my Z modeler brush, BZM. Uh, which, whatever direction you come at this edge, that's the direction it's going to extrude. So if I'm here and I choose to extrude a single edge, if I'm on this polygon and you see this orange line that's coming up, if I now click on this and pull down or up, I'm going to be extruding that edge from that polygon. Had I come, had I almost you know highlighted this polygon first and then hit the edge, this would be the polygon that it would be taking to extrude from. So once I do that once, I can now just take any other polygon, make sure I'm on the right side of it, and then just click the edge and I'll get the same distance. So if you're looking for something like that. If you want them to be combined, however, you can either do an edge loop partial, which will allow you to take that whole edge loop and do that or an edge loop complete um, or if you were to do a Q mesh of an edge so I did that by hovering over an edge and then changing to Q mesh edge that will do the same thing whichever direction I'm coming from that's the direction it's going to lift the poly or the new edge up from but now when I do the next edge you'll see that it'll lift up but if I kind of move my mouse while I'm here I can kind of make it snap and um, so sometimes Q mesh if you want it to snap extrude will never actually um, add the two of them together like that so the next one is to split edges and um, if you want a new edge in here so I'll hover over an edge I'll change to split and we only have one option that is edge and all that does because the Z model brush and, and Z brush in general only works with triangles and quads it will cut this and then it will generate triangles because obviously we can't have a five-sided face here it would be one two three four five sides otherwise so it actually fills in these triangles over here once these are in that means that we can then delete one or the other so we can hover over an edge click delete and, and select either of those two edges whichever one we're looking for so if we're looking to add in new stuff like that the next one is to connect um, if you hover over bridge uh, by default it will look like this so I've hovered over a vert I choose bridge I select two points and if I select the first point and then select the second point it will connect those two with a new edge so this one and this one will connect that this one and this one will connect that and you can kind of build your shapes up from there obviously if you've already got edges connected it won't okay um, so that's basically connect as in the old 3ds max command next one is uh, align edges so if you hover over an edge and we choose align edge strip is there by default you'll see that right now we have a bit of a curve to here and this edge while this is straight down the middle this edge this row of edges is not so if we do align edge and I click one edge here and then I click the next it's going to align all those edges in between those two and straighten them out in both this direction and this direction so you'll see that that's now a flat surface if I had taken it from the very top edge to the very bottom edge it would flatten that out so it's basically make planar effectively um, next one is if you want to add uh, 
edges to the center of something. So insert. If you insert a single edge loop, you're kind of guessing where the center of this is. You can hold down a shift, but it's just going to constrain it, align it to one side or the other. So what you really need to do is choose multiple edge loops. And you have two options here. Either just take the default, which is the first time you click, it will find the exact center. So if you immediately let go, sorry, if you immediately let go, and sometimes you may have to slide backwards or forwards a little bit, but if you immediately let go, effectively, that's the dead center. So now every single time you click, you're going to find the dead center of whatever it is that you're clicking on. The other option is to change your specified resolution to two. And then that will also do the, the exact same. If you do change it to two, change it to one, sorry. Uh, and then click in the center and that will always find the dead center. The next one is interactive edge flow or set flow, I think it used to be called in other apps. So when you insert this, we'll insert a single edge loop doesn't have this option, but multiple edge loops does. So again, if we're going to use a specified resolution, all we have to do is turn on smooth elevation and then we can click here and you can see all this is doing is smoothing out. It's inserting the edge, but it's actually keeping the trying to smooth out the shape that it's actually creating. So we get this nice smooth shape around here. I think it's called set flow in other apps. Uh, that actually works with multiple resolutions. So if you do have interactive resolution turned on and you just click and drag, you can smooth out a large area like that. Uh, the next one is holes. So if I have a large selection here, I held down alt to make a selection here. I can click on that and then hit delete a single poly having held alt it will treat everything that we have um, highlighted here as a single poly so i can now just click on one of these and that will create that hole and then from here we can go to close and we have two options concave hole and convex hole concave hole will give you an unreliable mess uh, convex hole will give you something that's a little bit more workable because from here all you have to do is delete um, if i hover over an edge we just want to delete the edge so we can delete these triangles and we get that this works better on a cylinder so if we have a cylinder here and if for some reason i had uh, taken this stuff and i delete these and then i go to close with convex hole you see we get nice clean results a con cave hole would have given us this which is much more unworkable um, next one is to bridge two holes so if we delete a poly here and we delete a poly here uh, we can hover over this I'm hovering over the edge here um, and I'm going to choose bridge and two holes so I can select the first and then the second and after I've selected the second I'm, I'm going to keep my my pen pressed down, so sorry, select the first, select the second, keep it held down and drag left and right. And then we can go up and down to increase or decrease the amount of polygons that we get there. Um, as I said, normally, you know, the fewer polygons, the better for this kind of stuff and let your dynamic um, smoothing or your normal smoothing uh, subdivisions, let that do the smoothing for you. The more you have, the more difficult it is to work with. Uh, the next one, is polygroups so if I'm over here and I choose polygroup and for some reason I would like this area here to have the same polygroups as here all I have to do is click on one hold down shift as I've clicked on it and then let go of both the pen and shift and then after that every time every polygon I click on will take on that poly color polygroup color um, and the last one is do nothing. So basically sometimes you'd be working on something and if your brush size is fairly big and you're trying to maybe connect things, you'll find that, uh, for example here, if I delete this polygon uh, and I'm trying to bridge between uh, two edges. So I'm trying to bridge here and here and maybe I'm having trouble selecting it or this one and this one and you know, maybe I'm accidentally hitting a vert or a polygon which is deleting the polygon so if you don't want that to happen if your polygon selection when you hold press spacebar is set to delete just change it to do nothing hover over a an edge or a vert rather and change that to do nothing 
and then you'll know that no matter what if you hit bridge and you can't hit this edge at least you're not going to start deleting something or moving verts or doing anything like that uh, again once you've done that if you need to get that back hover over one choose polygroup click that polygroup press shift and then click the next one the last one is when you do click a polygroup and um, if you hold down alt it will just toggle through new polygroup so if you want a new color you can do that then click once press shift and then that's the, the polygroup color that you're going to be assigning to new polys a couple of last things is that over here if you wanted to resolve an issue like here where you want this loop to be going all the way up rather than over here you have a couple of different options so one is to just change to a slice curve so for example i can choose a slice slice curve here and i can just sorry <laughs> slice curve i can just slice through here and zbrush will do that usual thing of, of trying to create triangles so if you did that you're going to have to go over here and then press stitch i'll make my brush nice and small again and stitch this to this um, and do the same on the inside and then we could do a slice down here and stitch this to this stitch here to here and here to here and then hover over delete remove that and remove that remove that and remove that um, that's one option another way to do it is to actually just get rid of this so we'll hover over one i'll press q mesh we keep it at a single poly i'll just push through that's got rid of that polygon i'll push this down i'll push this down i'll push this down that will clear all of them out we now effectively have a row of edges here so i can do the our align trick i'll click align edge strip i'll align this one to this one that straightens all of them up and then we can decide to push some of these out more if we want to q mesh them out etc Uh, another one is when you're actually moving stuff um, it can be kind of difficult to select make selections so rather than hold, holding control and masking out a couple of different uh, whichever verts that you want to move uh, if you do that you're going to have to hit control and then click outside to invert your selection so when you do go press w for move um, and you go to move that you're going to be moving moving those but rather than do that you're actually better off just holding down control and then alt and make your selections with that so control alt will set that here i've set this unmasked mesh center to a hotkey alt or uh, which will hop to that and then that makes it easier to move that stuff so now i can just control alt drag over something press alt or and then i'm over here and i can i can move that so the way to set that hotkey is to go down to masking and go to masked mesh center just control and hold down control and shift and click on that Sorry, control and alt and click on that and then the next shortcut key and um, like alt or just press that and then that will be assigned uh, remember to store your hotkeys in preferences config sorry preferences hotkeys store that will save them but yeah that's the the main trip uh, the main tip to take away from this is hold down control spacebar will let you move this around so if i want to select this area over here i can just do that and then press alt before i let go and then that will isolate that selection. Alt or will bring this over and I can now move these loops wherever I want. Hope these tips help and as usual, feel free to subscribe, like, comment below. If you have any other tips, I'd love to hear them. Cheers, bye.